This child is free. For her right now, freedom is a carousel. For others, hope is a jelly apple. Faith, the first laughing taste of pink cotton candy. These are Cuban refugees. Liberty is something fresh to them. They find freedom in a lot of little ways we sometimes forget about. A short time ago, they couldn't laugh. They needed help. Because in their eagerness to be free, their people were fooled by a false prophet, cheated out of dignity, robbed of self-reliance, stripped of jobs, money, land, homes, clothes. And in a state of confusion and shock, the lucky ones were pushed, almost naked, into the world. Their parents came here to the United States wearing only their talents, their education, their love of freedom. Doctor, lawyer, merchant, butcher, baker, teacher, they want only a place to live where they can walk without fear, where they can work and earn back their dignity. They come to us who are free, and they want only a chance to begin. We're very happy on behalf of the United Presbyterian Church nationally to welcome this group of our friends from Cuba who are going to be living here within the bounds of the cities of New Jersey. All of the Presbyterian Church is interested in trying to help you get settled to begin a new life here with us. We, all of us in the past, were immigrants at one time. Our great-grandfathers or our grandfathers or sometimes our fathers came here new and go through this experience that you're going through. But we do want you to know that it is because you came to us and we were able to find out how we could do this. This is the Rodriguez family. They are part of a Cuban refugee resettlement program. Mr. Rodriguez, his wife, and his twin daughters have been sponsored, adopted, by a group of Americans in New Jersey. They've been flown from Miami to be resettled, to make a new beginning. They bring with them all the quiet little terrors of strangers. They are going to have to contend with a climate that's completely different. They are going to have to cope with a language they barely know. Most men commute to New York City. And hardest of all, they must face an American community that has lived by itself for half a century without strangers from another land. In the south end of Kearney, there are some industrial factories and so on. Well, you face strangers better if you have a place to live, a place for your family, a place of your own. The sponsors had looked and searched for six weeks before and finally scraped through the layers of local prejudice and discrimination to find the Rodriguez an apartment. <laughs> Not surrounded by palm trees, perhaps, but clean and warm. Very empty, but very appreciated. How many rooms? Bedrooms. Two bedrooms. Two. Two. Two bedrooms. Dos quartos. 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 Diana and Elvira. Elvira. Sleep. In this bedroom. Yes. The living. The 
Mama, Papa, Potato, Potato. <laughs> With a roof over his family's head, a man's dignity begins to return, along with his national sense of humor. I, I, I like the apartment because he is near to boss, near to the store, and uh, is more important. In this moment, money. <laughs> In this moment, it's very important. Important. It's also important to have clothes. The dictator makes certain that refugees leave Cuba with only the clothes they can wear, no money, and graciously permits them to take three changes of underwear. That's all. <laughs> But necessity is also the mother of humor and humility. And these are the qualities Mr. Rodriguez brought with him when he looked for work. He also brought an interpreter because in the beginning his English was obviously limited. Well, I don't, I, I don't look for anything special. Of course, I would like to have something according to my job that I used to have, but I don't have any preferences and I would appreciate any kind of job I could get. I just want to get something to be able to live. What would you need in the way of salary? ¿Qué necesitaría en, eh, com, en de parte del salario? De parte del salario? Claro. Eh, Wages. Necesitaría un salario grande o chico o busca algo especial. No, no. no. Solamente poder vivir. No, just he, all he needs is to be able to live, to get an office to live. Mm. To live decently. To live decently, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Three days after he arrived, Avilio Rodriguez had a job. This university graduate, who for 17 years was manager of the laboratory in a Cuban sugar mill, was now helping to install and clean oil burners. He learned the job eagerly and gratefully, and in one third the time that it takes the average person, because it meant that he could earn his own way. His family could live decently. He could get back his sense of dignity. Feel kind of dirty today, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Avilio Rodriguez says he is one month old. The age of a refugee is not how old he is, but is counted from the day he's reborn, resettled. He has a job, a place to go home from. A man is a job or he's nothing. In Miami, he only sat and wondered and looked backwards. Here, he can look forward. He is part of the contributing present. Resettlement will make him whole again because he has the capacity, the desire to contribute to the community, to become an active part of the future. He's learning to speak English so he can communicate with words to all the eyes that stare at him from behind closed windows. He needs to understand them as much as they need to know him. Resettlement is a two-sided affair. There are two sides to Mrs. Rodriguez. She was a school teacher in Cuba, unfamiliar with the routine of kitchens. But now she's learning to understand different and sometimes unfriendly instruments, learning to shop for strange-looking vegetables, to open cans without really knowing what's inside them. She and her family are learning to live with all the surprises of democracy. The children are children, and they carry with them a universal language of joy, of respect, of mutual understanding. Children adjust to the patterns of living very quickly.
Cubans who have fled to freedom are grateful guests, helpful neighbors. A man could just have a job, could walk from the job to his home, stay closed in with his own family. But for people like Avilio Rodriguez, who come from a culture that is rich in community life, that has great traditions of family pride, a job isn't enough. A man and his family need friends, neighbors, need the chance to prove that they are just like us. I want to thank you for what you've done. Thank oh, you. no, 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 no. Muchas no. gracias. No, thank you. No, no, thank you very much. That's all right. You're welcome, sir. Avilio Rodriguez has made his beginning. But there are so many others waiting for the chance to begin. They come by plane, some of them come in small boats, but they don't come as a mass of humanity. They come displaced people looking only for a place to live and work. Each bringing his own talents, his own hopes, his own needs, wanting only a helping hand. Come on, All right. Now we'll pray. Oramos. No. Oramos. Our Father in heaven, we give thee thanks for the safe journey that our friends have had to this place. And now as we partake of this food, we ask thee to strengthen us and guide us in all the things that lie ahead. We pray that thy spirit will guide us as we seek housing and work for our friends. We pray for their loved ones whom they have left behind. We pray also for the rest of the families who have come may work out well for their resettlement. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, to you first. Oh. They want only a place to live where they can walk without fear, where they can work and earn back their dignity. They come to us who are free, and they want only a chance to begin.